Not a place I have to hide in. Life's not worth a damn till you can say I am what I am. And we are joined today for our first Zoom uh, recording of the uh, lockdown with the um, fabulous and always uh, terrific Maninia Griffith, who is the CEO of. Uh, belong to and of course the 2017 Dublin Pride Grand Marshal. First of all, Melinia, happy Pride. Happy Pride, Michael. Good to yeah. see you. Yes, it's an unusual one this year, isn't it? Because I th normally at this time of the year we'd be getting out all our finery, we'd be looking at uh, putting on the sunscreen and hoping for a fabulous day down there in probably Merrion Square. This time it's a bit different, isn't it? Yeah, it is. This time last year, we were getting ready with our friends in Youthwork Ireland to welcome over 500 young people uh, to Dublin and give them a big breakfast and a big party before we march together uh, uh, in Dublin Pride. And, you know, for me, it's my favourite part of the of whole Pride Festival, and I love Pride, um, is uh, that morning and seeing them all arrive in from the bus on the buses there mm -hmm. you know they may have been up at five o'clock in the morning to, to get uh, to Dublin from from you know the north, yeah, were, yeah. northern places and the yeah. southern places and they arrive in and then they're getting changed and putting on all their glitter and their rainbows and their heels and it's so so amazing you know to see them some of them have never been in a space with as many lgbt people and allies and to to be connected and part of a community like that it's such a gift yeah. so this year obviously is very different um but what we've we're trying to do because we did a piece of research um uh, around the impacts of covid on on young mm -hmm. people lgbt young people and we found that you know there was deep sense of loneliness and real problems with mental health so we really wanted to try and combat that mm -hmm. and so again this year with our friends in Youth Work Ireland we are doing um, a campaign called Bringing Pride Home so we have sent off so this morning hopefully mm -hmm. uh, over 500 young people will be opening packs um, uh, pride packs with lots of fun things inside pride t-shirts and face masks and sweets and uh, the Pride Guide and um, stuff around minding your mental health and all that kind of thing. And, and then we're asking for those who are out and it's safe to do so to take a selfie and share it because the, what we want to do is make sure that young people across Ireland feel connected, even if we can't be physically together. So they feel that, you know, we're in this together. So yeah. we're doing our best to try and yeah. recreate that spirit of community and connection. Yeah. They say that every uh, for every threat there is an opportunity, and I just would uh, would like to hear your thoughts on this one because for a lot of younger people, for um, they consider that LGBTQ it's about getting together, it's about mixing, it's about engaging, uh, and we appreciate that that's true. But as some of us get a bit older, well, you don't go out as much, but you still have. Uh, particularly engagements with a community and with individuals. Do you think this? because we're not able to meet as much as we might have in the past, this gives people an opportunity, particularly younger people, to think, what does exactly mean to be LGBTQ? Well, um, yeah, and I mean, I think for a lot of young people, what we've noticed is we've had a huge increase in the number of young people getting in touch with us who'd never been in touch with us before. Mm -hmm. um, so there are young people who were probably thinking about it or putting it out of their minds and um, and being stuck at home in lockdown has really has come to the fore. So mm -hmm. a lot of young people really struggling with coming to terms with uh, the fact that their gender identity or sexual orientation might be different from, mm -hmm. you know, their pals or their siblings. And um, so we've seen a huge increase in, 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 in those kind of callers and those mm -hmm. kind of young people being in contact with us. I think lockdown, it's, it's funny, there's, there's, Definitely been some positives, um, uh, but a huge amount of negatives. I think if you're somebody who struggles with anxiety or depression, being stuck indoors um, can have a devastating impact on them, especially if you're in a 
you know, in a household where you're not out or you are out, but you're not accepted. So, um, you know, 93% of the young people who responded in our survey, our LGBTI uh, lives in lockdown survey, a couple of weeks ago said that they were struggling with mental health issues. Um, mm -hmm. On the plus side, what we've seen is an uh, incre increase in the number of young people getting in touch and um, for a lot of young people, if they have broad, all access to broadband and access mm -hmm. to a device and they can, they have privacy and can get, get in contact with you, um, they have been getting in contact with us in, in greater numbers um, mm -hmm. because we're so available now online because that's mm -hmm. where all our resources are going. So Monday to Friday, nine to five, our youth workers at the, are at the end of a call, the end of a text or WhatsApp message have a zoom call young people just need to make an appointment through our website belong to.org and can have a chat with the youth worker about whatever is going on for them nothing is too small um, so that's been a positive and we're going to continue that work even you know as as um lockdown relaxes um, and we're delighted to be able to get back into the office and back into the workplace to do some of that face-to-face -face because for some young people, very vulnerable and, and, and what we would call sometimes hard to reach young people, the digital kind of co um, connection just doesn't work for them okay. for all sorts of reasons. You know, maybe they're not out or they don't have privacy at home. So having a chat on the phone or via Zoom, mm -hmm. just what doesn't suit mm -hmm. or they may have, you know, a, a part of their anxiety might be that they just can't listen to themselves, their own voices, or look at themselves on screen. So, yeah, maybe not yeah, everybody is not everybody's comfortable seeing themselves on the screen, are they? Exactly, exactly. So yeah. we're we're delighted we're going to have the option now. We're going to be able to do some youth youth uh, work in the space with small groups for now. And but we'll continue the, the the digital stuff for young people who you know maybe can't make it in because can't make it to their local LGBT group because they live on the other side of the county, oh. or um, they may have a disability, or there just might be other challenges around transport getting into to groups. So, sure, so yeah. um, you know, yeah. it's been one of the silver linings anyway that we yeah. really. For, for, particularly for younger people, I suspect, because both schools and colleges are closed. So even if you are out and even if you have a certain degree of acceptance in the community, there's a um, there's a cut off there that I suspect is quite difficult to deal with, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah because it's about community, you know, um, it's about that sense of belonging. And so even, you know, we've had calls from plenty of young people who are, are out and who have a supportive household, but they're missing their LGBT pals. They're, oh. you know, the young people who have this similar life experience. Oh. Like they can just be themselves without having to explain. You know that when you're with your tribe, when you're with your absolutely, you know, yeah. it, it's so they're missing that hugely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, people like you and I. Uh, who've been around um, for a while, we tend to have uh, built up bigger networks. So over time you get, it, it, I've never felt isolated for the simple reason is I know quite a lot of people and they know me and we con contact with each other. But I suspect that's much more difficult with younger people because you, you've got a much narrower range of contacts. Yeah, and I think for adolescents as well, I mean, you know, your friends are everything, aren't they? You know, Absolutely, so, yeah. um, so that's that's you know for LGBT adolescents that's that's multiply that again by you know uh, a figure of whatever ten you know mm -hmm. so yeah I mean you're right I think for for those of us who are older and, and lucky enough to be um, have our networks and that um, we can stay in contact mm -hmm. um, but we probably don't need it as much as 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 younger people do yeah. so it's yeah. a tricky tricky time for them. Sure. The, the figures you uh, you quoted there was 93%. How does that break down with, say, city versus country and female versus male? And you... no, we, didn't, we didn't ask those questions because okay. we wanted to keep the survey as, um, as uh, short as possible. So we didn't ask. We just asked people, were they within the age limit and did they identify okay. as LGBT? Um, we do have it break, broken down on the province kind of way, but, but, but we didn't ask those questions. We want to try and keep it as short as possible okay, to try and yeah. get as many young people. Uh, but 93% uh, is an alarming statistic, is it not? 
it is huge, especially when you compare it with um, Young Social Innovators did um, an excellent survey um, a few months pre previous to ours uh, with the general youth population and they found, which was alarming itself, that 53% of, of the general youth population were struggling with their mental health. Mm -hmm. So then multiply, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's a big jump up then to, to, to 93. It, 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 certainly, it, it certainly is. And, um, um, are we also seeing, which I uh, hate to say, a technological divide in the sense that uh, what I've been, uh, with the usage that I've been putting to uh, Zoom and involved with, it would appear that if you live in the city, you're reasonably well served with broadband, mm. but mo mm. you don't have to go very far away. And at the best, you've got unreliable broadband. And um, is that becoming uh, something that you've identified as a... Uh, uh, a problem in this, more of a problem in this day and age uh, than it might have been in the past. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, my goodness, you know, I know there was push for broadbands and we've had our scandals in, in, in Ireland around the broadband and all that, but my goodness, we need it more than ever. You know, I mean, there, we really are going to have to move to um, a, a better broadband service nationally because uh, that connection is is so vital. Yeah, I mean, we've been we support a, ne a network of LGBT youth workers across Ireland, and it is one of the biggest things that they've said. So, is stay in contact with young people um, who live in areas where there's just no broadband. That's a huge problem. Also, just it, privacy. You know, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for a lot of young people who live in. Uh, in urban areas, um, you know, they, they mightn't have the space to have a private conversation. So that's, that's, uh, that's a difficulty. Um, so look, there's, there's, you know, there's, um, there's, there's challenges for, lo for lots of different reasons, access mm -hmm. to devices, um, you know, not all homes have, you know, spare devices around for young people to be good connecting yeah. up with. But, but like, for example, one of the things, um, um, I, that I was really happy that happened during the lockdown was the HSE um, with um, Spun Out uh, launched a 24 mm. 7 crisis text line. So, at least, you know, text is the preferred method for um, adolescents to, you know, that's what they're so comfortable doing. They text their friends. Mm. So, they're, they're really happy to text. And that's amazing. It's a, a service 50808 and it's 24 seven crisis text line. Yeah. Um, but one of the other things that they're talking about is telepsychiatry um, because a huge, um, you know, uh, there aren't enough child psychiatrists in the country. Mm -hmm. and, and so they're exploring this and they've opened a hub in the West of Ireland. Again, great, uh, but you know this, that, that's going to depend on good broadband being available across sure, the country. Yeah. Yeah. You know, something I'm uh, hearing um, from largely adults at this stage is that problems that mightn't have been there, um, say, four or five months ago, and I'm talking about generally mental health issues, uh, I'm particularly hearing about alcoholism uh, amongst adult males, with the uh, pressures on the HSC, and we can understand that, um, are the is the availability of mental health services particularly for young people has that been challenged or diminished because of the uh, the physical uh, issues that we're uh, having to deal with at the moment Maninia? well yeah i mean it's it is harder to get a referral in you know, because the, the because gps aren't open and the for young people um the pathways into um, uh, you know getting support around your mental health are through CAMS, the Children and Adolescent Mental Health Services. So all of that has been slowed down um, uh, during COVID, which makes it more difficult. Um, I have to say, a lot of the partner NGOs that we would work with around mental health, though, have been have really been very. Um, you know, uh, uh, creative and had, have adapted. So uh, there is a lot, um, you know, when we were pushed to do it, there, there's a lot of services out there now that can offer counselling, low cost or even free um, counselling, um, which is great. But I suppose when it's more acute and you need more than that, um, it, it, yeah, it, 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 you know, the, the lockdown has certainly made things uh, uh, trickier.
Yeah, I know that you uh, particularly belong to and yourself personally have been involved very much in support of the uh, the trans community. Are there specific uh, problems that whether whether they're medical or whether they're social or whether they're political uh, that have um, disproportionately affected the trans community at this time in India? Oh yeah, it's been really, really tough um, uh, for lots of different reasons. Um, one being the access to healthcare. So, you know, worry about access to, um, uh, you know, HRT. Um, everything has been slowed down because of COVID. So if you're somebody who's been on a very, very long waiting list to get access to uh, the gender identity clinic, mm -hmm. um, out in South County Dublin, and, and now this is it's slowed down even more. It can it can in some some cases have a devastating impact on somebody's uh, mental health and well-being. So that's been really tough, and, and our friends in Tenny have been doing great work trying to um, push uh, for uh, you know working with the the clinic and trying to support. Uh, trans people and we've been trying to support uh, the young trans people in our service as well w with that it's very hard I mean really tough um, the other thing is you know um, with all the political um, uncertainty and that you know legislation around gender recognition for under 18s all of that has been slowed down exactly. and, and that can be very stressful for young people Indeed. who are you know really want to get that done uh, as possible as soon as possible and and then the other thing that's been happening recently is there's been you know i think there was a bit of a reprieve people were being much nicer to each other on social media for a long time which was lovely uh, but that seems to have kind of um uh, worn off recently yeah. and, and there's been a lot of of stuff said on on <laughs> social media that's been very upsetting to to trans people especially young trans people and um and, and so that's been very hard and and so sometimes when that's going on in when you're not in lockdown you can distract yourself you can meet with your friends all that but if you're at home online all the time you know it's kind of like an echo chamber and it's re-traumatizing all the time so we're really trying to reach out to young trans uh, and the non-binary and trans young people to you know to keep them con connected with their pals yeah. you know um to know that they are believed they are loved they are respected uh, and, and we're here for them yeah yeah no, this is a generation as well that probably would have grown up idolizing jk rowlings and uh, mm. for somebody like that to come out and uh, make the statements that she did must be devastating for young people who you know, who really admired somebody who did great work in getting young people to read. <laughs> yeah, I think, Sorry, go ahead. Yep. Yeah, I think just being, you know, people, people's identity still being questioned, you know, as being real or not, you know, I think um, that's hard, you know, yeah. and, and not to single out JK Rowling because she's one person and, yep. uh, you know, but, there are plenty of others, aren't there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I just mm -hmm. think, you know, me as a feminist, um, you know, and a, as a trans ally, you know, mm -hmm. I think, you know, we have to work together. You know, some, some trans, especially trans women, are some of the most marginalized people in our communities. You know, they're, they, they're, you know, the rates of unemployment, the rates of suicide, the rest, rates of mental health problems um, uh, amongst that, that group can be very, very high. And, and that's because of that stigma and prejudice and, um, you know, uh, and how difficult it is to, to live yeah. your life as, as a trans person. Yeah. We need to support them, not yeah. um, saying that we don't believe you or we're afraid of you. Now, well, I think I think you and I, in, in, on the one hand, I think find this very difficult to uh, to grasp because we have met some of the most talented, the most intelligent, the most courageous trans women that are you know that would be model citizens anywhere, and yet to see this bigotry, you wonder where does it come from, don't you? 
Mm -hmm. Well, I think it comes from a place of fear, I imagine, uh, for, for, for most people, you know. Um, I mean, there's always going to be a few bad eggs who are just in it for the devilment, right? But, yeah. but I think g genuinely some place is, uh, a lot of it comes from fear. And I think, I mean, going back to marriage equality, it, it comes sometimes from a place where you haven't had an opportunity to kind of sit down and talk to people. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I've had some great conversations with um, an, a, amazing, um, amazing people like I mean you know god bless Sarah Phillips she's so patient and yeah. um she, you know I've, I've been able to ask her questions and she's been so great not intrusive weird yeah. questions just come back to her with these um arguments that I've read online or whatever and she's just calmly able to yeah. rationalize and, and talk me through this and I'll go oh yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so most of the th I think the arguments um around you know not accepting and not supporting trans people I think come from a place of fear and mm -hmm. and ignorance and yeah. um and and back to like I said with marriage equality a lot of that was also to do with fear and ignorance so once you had an opportunity to sit down and have a rational conversation um, those fears are dispelled but it's very hard to have those you can't uh, have those conversations on Twitter yeah. no, you, know, I, you can't, uh, you have to have yeah. them face to face Absolutely. Or in a small group or um, you know, well, you can't do them in 140 characters Yeah, that's what, that was the lessons we learned from marriage equality was it not that uh, the conversations that you have face to face that carried the day I want to move on Meninia because Belong To I gather have uh, um, a partnership with Dublin Bus for this year's Pride. Tell us yeah. about that. What did, how did it come about and what does it involve? Well, really excited about it. As, as you probably know, Dublin Bus have a great history of doing uh, great stuff around Dublin Pride and they've produced mm. some of the most poignant and tear-jerking yeah. um, films uh, yeah. w uh, over the last few years. And they've been doing a lot of work uh, as well internally. And I know Tenny um, have worked with them in relation to pol internal policies and that. So they've a good, great track record really on, mm. on um, uh, trying to be including inclusive, LGBT inclusive, and make sure that staff and customers who are LGBT feel included. So this year they approached us and said that they wanted to do something with us, and, um, uh, and we were delighted. And um, uh, so what they're going to do is they're going to wrap 100 buses, um, and, and starting on Monday the 29th, we're going to see those buses around Dublin, um, really highlighting uh, belong to and the services we support Excellent. you know and making sure people know that you know growing up LGBT isn't all rainbows despite mm. marriage equality and gender recognition mm. but there's still uh, a lot of stuff that LGBT young people have to deal with whether that's fear of rejection or isolation or bullying or, or just even coming to terms with it themselves and learning mm. to accept and love themselves um, mm. you know so what what we're delighted is you know th that those hundred buses going around Dublin will raise awareness about belong to and then hopefully lots more young people or parents guardians and carers um will get to know who we are and can send young people our way that, that I, I think that's going to be a, a tremendous uh, uh asset to young people because just to see just to see a bit of public recognition makes so much of a difference doesn't it Mm. Oh, absolutely! To see, yeah. and we love there's lovely, gorgeous, there'll be gorgeous pictures uh, of young LGBT people. So to uh, see yourself represented on the side uh, of a bus, I mean, we've come a long way, you know. Uh, yeah. Well, this time last year, uh, I rode through Pride for the first time on the Bear Bus, and I can tell now. I know the Dublin Bus have a small involvement with it, but I've been to a lot of Prides in different countries and different cities in my day. But this was the most fabulous time I had ever had anywhere nice. because they were such a terrific, welcoming fun group of people. Um, and yeah. so, uh, uh, as I say, Meninia, it's a, the fact that we get a bit of now of official recognition is so important, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And knowing that you belong, you know, and knowing that, you know, uh, um, you know, Dublin Bus is supporting yeah. you and, yeah. 
um, you know, and they want you to know who belong to or so that you can find your tribe, you know, and connect with your Absolutely. community. Absolutely. And who knows in future years, we may have the Dart and the Lewis as well. So wouldn't that be, uh, tr wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't that be a very straightforward. Meninia, go and have a great uh, uh, virtual pride. I think um, we, we, we'll hope to be all back and uh, hugging each other next year yeah. and uh, yeah. enjoy, enjoying the festivities. But in the meantime, we're still there. We're still in solidarity and we're still a community. And I think that's very important. Meninia yes. Griffin, always a delight to talk to you and you're still a living treasure. <laughs> oh, thanks. Happy Friday. <laughs> You too. Take care. Bye bye. There we go. Oh, that was, that was great, Michael. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah, no, I'll put that up and I'll send you a link as well. So, uh, Lovely. I'll keep, uh, Lovely. if there's anything else, I'm, uh, I'm now subscribing to your uh, newsletter. If there's anything oh, else, come back to me and we'll always put it out. You know that. Wonderful. Yeah. Thanks, Take Michael. Care. All Cheers. the best. Have a great pride. You too. Great to talk to you. Bye. My world that I want to have a little pride in My world and it's not a place I have to hide in Life's not worth a damn till you can say I am